Wireless Internet provided by SWKO Wireless Internet. Covering the high plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Yes, it is. High Plains Today right here on TV23. Hi, everybody. It's Monday, April 9th, 2018. On today's show, I'll be joined by Donald Bates. He is an assistant professor of English at Dodge City Community College, and they are going to welcome author Thomas Averill to the campus this week, and we're going to find out more about that. In the meantime, let's see what's happening. Well, two liberal residents were killed in a car accident in Meade County Saturday morning, three miles west of Meade on US 54. An SUV was eastbound on US 54, and a semi was westbound. The SUV moved toward the center line in a possible passing attempt, lost control, and went into a side skid. The semi-truck struck the SUV on the driver's side. Both occupants of the SUV were killed in the accident. Now, the driver was 62-year-old Xavier Lemus and his passenger, Maria Delamus, both of Liberal, and they were pronounced dead at the Western Plains Medical Complex in Dodge City. The driver of the semi, a man from California, was not injured. A Garden City woman and a child were taken to Ellsworth County Medical Center for injuries suffered when the sport utility vehicle they were in struck the rear of a stopped vehicle on the Kansas Highway 156 at the intersection with Kansas K-140 on Friday afternoon. 56-year-old Ava Alvarez of Garden City was driving a Jeep Liberty when she failed to stop and her vehicle struck the rear of a stopped Ford Ranger, driven by 25-year-old Justin Sukup of Wilson. Alvarez and a passenger, a three-year-old, were taken to the Ellsworth Hospital. Two other passengers in the Alvarez vehicle, a six- and nine-year-old, were listed on the report as not being injured. Sukup was also not injured. Well, it's been a back-and-forth debate between legislators and the Kansas Supreme Court, all to meet the deadline of increasing funding to public schools. Now, late Saturday night, Kansas legislators approved a $534 million increase to spending on education. Governor Jeff Collier publicly endorsed the bill that would phase in the $534 million increase in education funding over five years, siding with GOP leaders in the Senate and House, or in the State House, who largely drafted it. Attorney General Derek Schmidt had joined Collier in pressuring legislators to act over the past week. But the plan passed did not feel like a compromise to Senate GOP leaders who favored a plan to phase in $274 million over the same five years. Now, they argued that the bigger plan approved early yesterday morning, I mean early, early, and sent to Collier would force lawmakers to raise taxes Within two years, Senate President Susan Weigel said, we know, absolutely know, if we're going to pay this bill, we're going to have to increase taxes. And the House and Senate agreed to Senator uh, Collier's legislation, creating a state law forbidding people from possessing a firearm if convicted of misdemeanor domestic abuse in the past five years or subject to court-issued restraining orders for harassment or stalking of an intimate partner. Origin, original contents of House Bill 2145 also forbid possession of a firearm by a fugitive from justice or an immigrant unlawfully in the United States. The Senate agreed with those provisions but amended the bill to alter criminal use of a weapon to say possession of a throwing star, yeah, throwing star, was unlawful only if a person had intent to harm. The Senate adjusted the uh, bill to say Kansas statute exempted from state prosecution anyone possessing a firearm, sound suppressor, exclusively manufactured, sold, and possessed in Kansas. In the past, two, in the past, two Kansas men were prosecuted in federal court for selling and owning a suppressor despite following the Kansas statute. And Kansas license plates, well, they'll soon look different. Not a big look. Plates for newly registered vehicles will have the same design as before, but will be flat instead of embossed. The state will print plates on demand and then send them to vehicle owners rather than pre-printing plates and keeping them in stock. 
Now, the Kansas Department of Revenue will stop accepting new orders for personalized license plates on April 27th, ahead of the transition. The ability to order personalized license plates will begin again on August 1st. Now, once the transition is complete, any customer wanting to purchase a new plate will place an order at their county motor vehicle office. The customer will take a 30-day temporary license tag while the permanent plate is produced. The permanent plate will then arrive at the customer's home within 10 to 14 business days. Kansas Department of Revenue says the new process will eliminate millions of dollars of license plate inventory. Now, the agency emphasized that there is no need for current plate holders to order replacements. And the Break the Silence 5K run walk scheduled for this last Saturday, the 7th at North Blue Bonnet Park was postponed due to low wind and or low wind chill values and snow accumulation on race day. Southwest Medical Center in Liberal has rescheduled this event for participant safety and comfort. The race has been rescheduled for this Saturday, the 14th, at North Blue Bonnet Park. Registration and race times will remain the same. Registration has been extended through April 14th, and anyone interested in taking part in this 5K walk run to benefit the Southwest Sexual Assault Services Program, refunds will be available due to change if the needed because the date changed. And starting today, Road 21 in Grant County between Road H and Road F will be closed while Kansas Gas Services replaces Casement. Now hopefully the closure will only last a week. So if you're going that way, be prepared. The road's going to be closed. And if you felt some rumbling early this morning, you are not wrong. I didn't feel it, but maybe you did. A magnitude 4.5 earthquake struck near Perry, Oklahoma around 522 this morning and a magnitude 2.8 at around 905. So far, there are no reports of damage. I didn't feel either one of those. All right, that's a look at some of the stuff that's happening out there. You know what? We're going to come back. We're going to look at the radar. You're going to see some precipitation on there. Something we haven't seen for a while. Stick around. We'll be back with the weather right after this. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. Hi, I'm Nick Baumgartner, owner of Midwest Barter Exchange. So what is barter anyway? Midwest Barter helps you trade what you have for what you really need. You can use Midwest Barter Dollars to purchase hundreds of products for your business or personal use without the use of cash. You can even trade for TV advertising right here on KDGL TV 23. Find out more on our website or call 785-383-4965. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay, never leave you alone. Debt is really sucking the life out of them. He's picking up the phone. Oh, no, not consolidated credit. With one call, they can lower their credit card rates. And consolidate their bills into one low payment. They'll pay off their debt in no time. Call consolidated credit now. Because debt sucks. Call 1-800-380-8565. That's 800-380-8565. Call now. 40 million. That's the number of free phones still available and the number of how many Americans can still get prescriptions free. Free could be wonderful. That's why I'm still working at 77 years old to pay off my prescriptions. I needed to have a, a prescription filled and I had to leave because I couldn't afford it. Call now and see what's available for you. Free prescriptions. Over 10 million people get prescriptions free and the program has expanded so another 40 million can. Free dental. Over 15,000 dentists have provided over $330 million in free dental work. Free cell phones. 40 million free cell phones are still available with free minutes and more. Free cell phone would change my life right now because it is something I cannot afford to get. Medical supplies like back braces, knee braces, and diabetic supplies may be covered too. The free RX Plus hotline has saved callers over $12 million on their prescription costs. These free programs are now available to 40 million more people. Call now. 
the local weather forecast for the High Plains. Kind of cloudy there as we look off to the west on this Monday. You know what? Let's take a look at the readings here at the station. 48 degrees, 65% the relative humidity. Winds right now are calm. Barometric pressure is on the rise. Now let's take a look at a radar. Now this is, we've got a nice band. You get over here around Elkhart, Richfield, back through Rolla, Hugoton, Liberal, and all the way along the uh, Nebraska, or not the Nebraska, the Oklahoma, Kansas line. Got some nice showers. They haven't, I mean, we've been dry, dry, dry down in this part of the viewing area. So that's a nice thing to see. All right, let's take a look at the current temperatures around the viewing area. You can see everybody in the 40s and the 50s. It's one of those throw a blanket over them and you get them all days. Looking at the current dew points now, everybody's got some fairly good humidity, but believe it or not, we get towards the end of the week, even with this higher humidity and that precipitation we just saw on the radar, fire dangers are going to come back up later in the week. All right, looking at the current wind speeds out there, not a lot of wind. You get down into Perryton and Guymon, they're a little breezy, but most all winds are pretty much out of the northerly direction today. Looking at the highs and lows as recorded at the Garden City Regional Airport. We got 63 yesterday, 87 back in 1988 and 2011. It was 31 yesterday morning. 19 was the overnight low. That record was back in 1964, basically at the airport. Now, I know we had more precipitation down around the liberal area and stuff with the snow, but airports only recording seven hundreds. Looking at what we've got in score, store for today, 20% chance of precipitation. But if you're down around Liberal and across the Oklahoma, uh, Kansas line, you're seeing 100%. So anyway, winds are going to switch around to the north at 56, or at 14, 56 is the high. Man, I will get this right sooner or later. Tonight, though, a lot of clouds are clearing out, 36 for the overnight low. Winds are going to go around to the southerly direction. Going to bring us some warm air. We're going to start warming up tomorrow, 73 the high. Winds are going to be out of the southwest at 18, not too bad, 46 for an overnight low tomorrow night. Winds will remain out of the south at about 15, that's not too bad either. But you look at this, now this is the last chance of precipitation that we have for a while. Look at that high on Wednesday. We're going to get up to 90, 95 on Thursday. We're going to start cooling back down on Friday and into the weekend, but you can see we have that precipitation that's rolling through today. There's not going to be much more after that. And like I say, towards the end of the week, we're going to be looking at some high fire dangers once again, believe it or not. All right, let's see where our good friend Jeff Hutton's going to be this week and into next week. All right, today, 7 o'clock, Medicine Lodge. He'll be at the Annex. Then on Wednesday, the 11th, 7 o'clock, he'll be at the St. John Courthouse. Then on Thursday, he'll be in Elkhart at the Civic Center. You can find him out there at 7 o'clock. Going into next week on Monday, the 16th, yep, 7 o'clock, La Crosse Fire Station. He'll close out next week on Thursday, the 19th. He'll be in Lakin at the hospital at 7 o'clock. All right, that's a look at uh, kind of what's happening in the weather. Stick around. We'll be back with Mr. Bates right after this. Soldiers in the Army National Guard serve to give back to their country and communities. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for an array of benefits, such as affordable health and life insurance benefits, education benefits, including tuition assistance, student loan repayment, and GI Bill programs, a retirement plan based on part-time service, and VA home mortgages. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about all the benefits available in the Army National Guard. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare plan? Are you sure? Many people with Medicare are eligible for plans that include extra benefits in addition to those found in original Medicare. Benefits like dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free with no obligation to enroll. In addition to hospital and medical coverage, at no extra cost, you could also get coverage for prescription drugs, dental, hearing, vision, and more. In many areas, plans with benefits are available with $0 copays for many services, $0 monthly premiums, or $0 deductibles. That's hospital, medical, prescription drug, dental coverage, and more included in one plan with premiums that may be as low as $0 a month. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. 
The consultation is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 1-800-521-3583. That's 1-800-521-3583. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay, never leave you alone. Debt is really sucking the life out of them. Yes, they look like debt. Warm dofa. <laughs> <laughs> He's picking up the phone. Probably calling his uncle to borrow money. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh, no, not Consolidated Credit. With one call, they can lower their credit card rates. And consolidate their bills into one more payment. They'll pay off their debt in no time. Put, Put down the phone. phone! Put down the phone! Order a pizza! With extra red sauce! That Consolidated Credit makes it too quick and easy to get rid of us! Thanks to Consolidated Credit, there can be life after that? Call Consolidated Credit now and get your life back. Because debt sucks! Call 1-800-357-5733. 800-357-5733. That's 800-357-5733. Call now! college is great but before you enroll which do you think is a better way to earn your degree live on campus in a dorm where you can't sleep with a roommate you can't stand attend lectures that you can't hear with cafeteria food that you can't eat or learn online at independence university on the porch with your puppy in the kitchen with your kitten on your bed with your bunny your campus is wherever you want it to be that's independence university and you'll also get a laptop and tablet to use in school and you can keep them when you graduate 1-800-274-8142 And welcome back. I'm joined in studio today by Mr. Don Bates. He is an associate professor of English, Dodge City Community College, Dodge City, America. How are you today? I'm doing good, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Oh, my pleasure. All right, now, in this next eight minutes, we're going to learn everything there is to know about Thomas Averill, right? That's correct. He is an author in Kansas, and he's written a number of books, and he's coming to visit, right? He is. He is. Let me kind of give you the backstory. I was at a uh, English conference at Johnson Community College over in Overland Park, and Tom was the keynote speaker. Uh, did an excellent job of kind of explaining his writing background and uh, some of the time that he spent at Washburn University teaching English. And I just happened to introduce myself after the uh, uh, speaker conference was over, and I said, "Hey, would you mind maybe coming out to Dodge City and uh, and speaking to us?" He said, "I love Dodge City." And uh, I said, well, Who knew, right? Yeah, I said, Who knew? great, great, glad to hear it. <laughs> and uh, found out that, you know, over the ensuing months, talking to Tom, that he's a real big proponent of Kansas literature, Kansas writers. Um, you know, he himself lives in Kansas. He's over in Topeka. But uh, he's got a real just kind of passion, I guess you would say, for Kansas history. And uh, it definitely comes through in his work. He's got a very diverse... Uh, collection of publications and he said hey I've got a new book coming out it's going to be uh, released sometime in early 2018 Um, that would be a perfect uh, you know setup for me to come out and speak to you guys and so I said let's do it and so we've got Tom coming out to uh, to the college to speak so and he is just so everybody knows he is the writer in residence and he's like a professor of emeritus or whatever of english and creative writing and stuff at washburn right that's correct yeah okay. tom that's tom, his that's his day job right? that's his day gig <laughs> you bet and uh you know everybody's got to have one but especially writers <laughs> but um yeah he's uh, he's been at washburn a long time uh very well known there but again has the time to kind of create his own fictional worlds too and, and get them published and they're 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 quite good Okay, so now, and okay, now you told me the title of his latest book, and it's like this long. It is a somewhat of a long title, Chris. Right. I'm not going to lie. G- g- give me that title again. It's the Found Documents from the Life of Nell Johnson Door, a novel. And Do you know who Nell Johnson Door well, was? Well, you got to read the book to find out. But uh, I will tell you that <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get anything for that one. <laughs> But uh, I did do a review of Tom's book recently for the uh, Dodge City Globe. And I got to tell you, it's a really interesting book. Um, One of the things that that really struck me is it appears to be a collection of diary entries and letters 
written by a woman in Kansas back in the 1850s. Mm. And so when you first start reading it, it's almost as if you're reading someone's diary or letters. What you find out, though, in the preface is Tom made all this up. Oh. So it is fiction, okay. absolutely. All right. But it has the feel of historical accuracy. So it's a real interesting approach to, to the novel, I think. Okay, so in the 1850s, so we're pre-Civil War, and now does it, how long of a period does it cover? Now, does it go into the Civil War? And It does, it does. Uh, basically, the story starts when Nell and her husband move to Kansas. Uh, they're actually very uh, active in the Underground Railroad. Ah. So they're basically smuggling runaway slaves uh, out of Arkansas, some of the southern states, into the free state of Kansas, what would become the free state of Kansas. It's just a territory right. at the time. Um, they're helping these slaves escape to the north. And so that's kind of their reason for being in, in early Lawrence, Kansas. Um, they end up staying there. Unfortunately, um, well, I don't want to give away too much, but there's a pretty big tragedy prior to, prior to the Civil War for Nell. Um, she perseveres, becomes an early settler of Lawrence. And what's kind of interesting, and I think this is where Tom kind of brought in sort of his interest in paleontology and fossil hunting, uh, Nell becomes an amateur scientist and goes all around the Lawrence, Kansas area looking for fossils uh, and starts sending them to museums in New York and begins to get a little bit of a reputation as a, an amateur paleontologist. All right. So, wow. Okay. Now... With this book, though, it, it, it's like he's really had to get into Kansas culture and history then. So he really is really interested in that kind of stuff in order to write this fiction novel, correct? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that stands out for this book is Tom obviously did a lot of research. Yeah. You know, it really does appear to be written by a, a real woman from the past. and. Huh. You know, the thing that's kind of nice, though, is wh what I often find is when you do find authentic documents, letters, things that people have written, sad to say, they're kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's face it, what do most people write about? They yeah, write about yeah. the weather. They write about their illnesses. Uh, they gossip a little bit about the neighbors. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. You're right. So, so, so I think the challenge that Tom had with this book is how do you create letters that have that feel of authenticity, but say more than just, you know, the mundane kinds of things that we normally write letters about. And so he's very, uh, I think, skillful in doing that. So you've got him coming out to Dodge City Community College on April 12th. 12th. Yes. That's a Thursday. He's going to be there Thursday the 12th, 7 p.m., it's totally free to the public. I was going to say, open to the public. Absolutely. Best part is, doesn't Absolutely. cost you anything. Free would be the operative word there, right? Yes, now? sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Where's it going to be held at? It's going to be at the Little Theater. So when you first come into the campus, it's literally the, the first building that you come to mm -hmm. on the left-hand side. Um, we've got a nice little auditorium in there. And I think Tom is basically going to talk about his writing process, kind of how he goes about researching and finding some of his topics. Um, he'll also bring some new uh, copies of the book, so oh, if people yeah. want to buy it, sign it. Uh, he's more than happy to do that. Uh, and he'll probably do some question and answers, too, for people who are just you know, interested in Kansas history and that kind of thing. Yeah, because this is not, this, is not this guy's first jab at writing, right? Because he's written a lot of short stories and poems and stuff like that and edited books for people and stuff, too. So Absolutely. He's been in this for a while. He definitely has. And the other thing about Tom, he's a big proponent of Kansas writers. Yeah, that's a cool thing. What a lot of people don't realize is there are some folks that have either lived here or do currently live here that write books. Yeah. And uh, not all of them are household names, but uh, I think that, you know, there is a lot of interesting history in Kansas. You know, one of the things that, that Tom really taps into is this whole idea of a free state yeah. and the fact that Kansas really did buck the trend um, yeah, no. people don't realize that, that during the Civil War, Kansas was the Kansas Territory stuff was a big deal. Absolutely, and and not without violence. Right. I mean, there were certainly cases where uh, people from both sides, you know, and and Tom mentions this in his book. You know, guys like John Brown, yes, a young Abraham Lincoln who's actually running for president shows up in uh, Leavenworth, Kansas. 
Um, that's one of the kind of fun things about this book is you get to see kind of a firsthand view of some of these characters yeah. from history. It's interesting. Okay, so let's tell everybody again. This is going to be on Thursday, April 12th at the Little Theater, Dodge City Community College, yep. 7 o'clock. Yep. Free, people. Free. You can, go get, you can go get some culture when you say there's nothing. What if everything worked like those other guys? Welcome to Awesome Burgers. If you would like to place an order, press Please hold. You will be connected to the next available drive to attendant. Please place your order. Uh, yeah, For Awesome Burger, press 1. For orange soda, press 7. For fries, press 15. For tomatoes, press 2. For ten. You have pressed an incorrect button. Please hold. Welcome to Awesome Burgers. If you would like to place an order... At Pioneer Communications, you can talk to a real person ready to help. Call today for service you can rely on. Are you a Kansas college student considering a career in broadcasting? Well, listen up. If in the fall you'll be entering your junior or senior year at a Kansas four-year college or your sophomore year at a Kansas two-year college and are enrolled in a broadcast program, you may qualify for a scholarship from the Kansas Association of Broadcasters. Application deadlines May 1st. For details, go to kab.net and click on Student Services. Sponsored by the member stations of the Kansas Association of Broadcasters. College is great, but before you enroll, which do you think is a better way to earn your degree? Live on campus in a dorm where you can't sleep, with a roommate you can't stand, attend lectures that you can't hear, with cafeteria food that you can't eat, or learn online at Independence University. On the porch with your puppy, in the kitchen with your kitten, on your bed with your bunny, your campus is wherever you want it to be. That's Independence University. And you'll also get a laptop and tablet to use in school, and you can keep them when you graduate. 1-800-274-8142. Hey, you know what? It is baseball season. Hutchinson Community College, they won the first game of a baseball doubleheader against visiting Garden City, but dropped the nightcap in a Kansas Jayhawk Community College conference matchup Saturday. The Blue Dragons took a 5-3 victory in the seven-inning opener before Garden City pulled out an 8-5 triumph in nine innings. And Cleveland catcher Jan Gomes, he beat everybody with one big swing. The wind, the record cold temperatures, and... The Royals, Gomes hit a tie-breaking two-run homer off Brandon Maurer in the ninth, lifting the Indians to a 3-1 win over the Royals yesterday. Coldest game in progressive field, 32 at game time. All right, 49 degrees here, 66% percent, uh, percent relative humidity. Winds are out of the west, northwest at two. Barometric pressure is on the rise. Looking at the seven-day, you know what? going to warm up. I mean, it's going to warm up. It's going to be 95 on Thursday. Not much chance of some precipitation. Have a great day. See you next time. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL TV. Hi, I'm Nick Baumgartner, owner of Midwest Barter Exchange. So what is barter anyway? When we were kids, things were much simpler. Trading one thing for another was something we did at school on a daily basis. As a kid, you didn't have the cash resources to get things you wanted, but you still managed through barter. In today's economy, not every business has the cash required to grow effectively. Prospecting is difficult and time-consuming, leading you to believe things like, I don't have cash to entertain my clients and prospects. There's no money for marketing and advertising, or fixing my work truck for a new website, social media, Printing cards and brochures, mass mailers, accounting, taxes, bookkeeping, consultants, PC repair, dental, radio, TV, legal, alarm system, catering, mechanical, parking, office equipment repair, electricians, networking, medical bills, website, graphic designers, PCs, iPhones, Macs, headshot, plumbing, mechanics, sign-in, sales training, landscaping, surveillance cameras, leaking roof, and the list goes on. Realizing that running a business can be expensive, many owners and managers have tried to exchange their goods and services for something that they need. Sometimes it works out well. But focusing on trying to make a direct trade is not the best use of your time. Barter Exchange takes that struggle away and allows your business to utilize trade in the form of a one-to-many scenario as opposed to trading directly with another business. We act as a brokerage and marketing firm for companies to grow their business. We can help match businesses to each other with the best fit possible, even if it doesn't mean trading directly with each other. Okay, but how do we keep track of our trade dollars? You can also consider us like a bank, but instead of using cash currency, we utilize Barter Exchange dollars. At Midwest Barter, better barter means better business for all of us. Midwest Barter Dollars to purchase hundreds of products 
for your business or personal use without the use of cash. You can even trade for TV advertising right here on KDGL TV 23. Portions of TV 23.